In this episode, we're going to cover the essentials to detailing your model. So in this episode, we're going to cover like how far do you need to take details, um, talk about the like contrast ratio and stuff like that to uh, further enhance the model that you have and, and finish it up. So when it comes to detailing the model, you're going to want to try to find a pretty fine tip brush. Um, the brushes that I've been using for the past year are slow fuse gaming brushes. Getting the smaller brush is going to make it a lot easier for you to get the details onto that model. The smaller the brush you go on those details, the easier it is to apply the paint to that part and without having to hit any of the other parts. If you try to go a little bit bigger on the brush to hit some of these smaller parts, that's where you're gonna start making mistakes. So the smaller the surface you have on that brush, the easier it's gonna to be to apply those details. So some of the things you're gonna to wanna to look out for is trying to minimize the amount of surface that you have to cover or different surfaces that you might have to cover. What I mean by that is that you have um, armor, you have skin, cloth, faces, um, leathers, different materials that, that the model would then clearly have a different scheme or a different look or a different um, painting style. So if you wanna get your stuff done quickly, you're gonna to try to minimize on all those different surface areas. I was told a long time ago from another um, experienced uh, painter when I was playing the hobby around third or fourth edition, long time ago, is that he used to say, you know what, just paint what you can see. Meaning that like, don't get too hung up on like getting the undersides of something and getting a little bit of detail in a place that nobody is ever going to check. Because again, this channel is designed to get your minis on the field as fast as possible to play the game, but also fully painted. So each one of the Space Marines that we started with in the very beginning in the process of priming, inking and dry brushing and all that, um, you know, we, we did not actually use any faces and we did not use any packs or leather packs or ammo packs or grenades or anything like that that we applied later on. We're literally using the most minimal amount of surface area that we have to cover. So with that being said, something you're going to want to do is after you pick out your base coat and you've already got the model base coat in the color that you want, you're going to want to pick out your accent color. What you're looking for in that accent color is going to be something that gives you high contrast or as contrast as you can make it to really make that accent pop. And also because of that contrast is going to make your undercoat or your base coating also pop. So what I would suggest is you're going to pick out certain little details. Um, you can go online and try to look up like some inspiration. Just type in, you know, Primaris Space Marine and see what you can find. Or just look on the box, look inside your codex and see if you can find something that you might like. You don't always have to paint to the box. You don't always have to paint what other people are doing. But it is, it does serve a purpose to give you some suggestions um, about what kind of accent color that you might want to pick out. So I think when I look at this and I look at this green, I think the accent color that I'm going to make is I'm going to make a red. And I think red goes well with green. So sometimes you might want to look up um, your color wheels to try to figure out what that accent color is going to be. But what I'm suggesting is that you try to find something that brings you contrast. The reason why I keep bringing up contrast is because contrast is what's seen across the board. Contrast makes something pop out. Contrast is very visual appealing to the eye. Um, so I would suggest that you find something that then can make those things pop and I wouldn't suggest trying to do too many accent colors. Some other accent colors that you might want to apply are going to be um, some gold, some silvers. Um, looking at this Primaris Marine right here is I used a scale 75 um, Viking gold is what I think it is and I applied some accent or some details to the model um, that I think broke up some of the silver that was in there, but still applying an accent of yellow and red to the shoulders to make this model pop. So for the model that we're gonna be actually showing and painting is going to be a red accent. And I'm gonna keep it simple, because again, I wanna get these models to the field as quick as possible. So what you'll find and what I find to be a slight pain in the ass is going to be that you have to hand paint the weapons and sometimes that can be unavoidable. Um, back in the day or if you look at sort of the, the old school marines, uh, the, the bolt guns you could actually paint them separately but for now a lot of the Primaris marines that we have, um, the guns are just kind of embedded in their hands. So after you get done what you're gonna get done, you're gonna have to go in there and hand paint. And what I, what I will say is like, you're gonna wanna hit weapons with a metallic early on. And in some cases that might be it. You can hit it with a metallic, 
um, a, a dark silver. Y you know, you don't want to make the weapons too crazy, um, unless if it's like a power weapon and there's a point to doing it. Um, but then you can just then uh, do a silver, do a bronze, do a gold, ink over it, maybe a dry brush for some highlights, and you're done. Same process you did with the base coating in this in this video series. Sometimes when you're painting metallics or even other kind of colors, especially metallics, um, when you're doing the the eagle or you're doing a little piece or you're doing the gun, you're doing the weapon, is that right after that, you the next step would be to ink that piece because you still want contrast inside the details. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to just kind of glop on paint or you know throw the paint down and then after that you don't see any of the details of those little pieces. You want to make sure you throw another layer of ink down very quickly and that way that those little details can pop and I'll show you what I mean by that by doing the eagle on this marine right here. So to prep to do the details on these models, I would suggest you can go the route of doing a wet palette, and that means that like basically you're keeping that that um, the paint that you're using on the brush wet, um, and then you might want to do what you've heard time and time again through other channels or other people um, at GW or whatever other painting tutorials to use two thin coats. And what they mean by that is that you're not just going to glop the paint on there. My suggestion is that, uh, and I've been doing this for a long time, is to actually just keep the brush wet. Um, and to make sure that you're, you're looking at the paint. If you're using GW, the paint inside there is gonna usually retain a certain, um, or certain consistency inside the pot. If you're gonna use a paint like this, where you have to actually like drop the paint onto a surface and then dip the brush in, is that eventually this will dry up and you just have to kind of get a feel for it. You don't want to apply really thick coats and have that kind of bumpy and wavy effect going on inside the details that you can tell that it's paint. Um, but you know, to, to get through it quicker than to have to like do a wet palette and have to do two thin coats, is just keep that brush kind of wet and kind of um, you know a, a certain level of consistency that it's not too thick while you apply to the model. But I will say that like after you apply that coat, that in most cases when you put the ink over top of it, it will help out and disguise that sort of thickness to the paint. So now after you've picked out the details and you've painted the details that you want, you've got some contrast going on and you've picked out your accent color, the model's looking great. So now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to base the model. And then after basing the model, you're gonna to wanna to spray it with a certain varnish so that way it's not gonna rub off and all the work that you put into it is gonna be sealed. So on the next episode, we're gonna cover basing and how to do a, a very easy way to base the model. Um, and also show other techniques of basing that you might want to be aware of in the very beginning before you start even building those said models. Like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you on the next episode.